Hello. I have recently learned something new about FF Pro, and it turns out I've been using it wrong, I suppose, for years. Um, let me show you what I mean. So, FF Pro, as you can probably guess by, by the name, is a member of the FF MPEG family, and it allows us to probe a video file or some kind of multimedia streams um, and find out information about them. So to demonstrate, I'm in my camera directory and let's say we want to find the resolution of this video here. We could say FF probe. Now again because it's a member of the FFmpeg family and my input file name contains a colon, I need to specify file And then I run that, and there's all kind of interesting information about the video. And I can see that the resolution is right here. So I want to grab that. Now, those who work with me would be forgiven for thinking that I'm about to reach for said, um, but I'm not because I ain't touching that with said. It is just too much. <laughs> and um, the FFmpeg developers have particular opinions about this because it turns out that there are a few bug reports of people who are confused about this very thing here. So let me show you what's going on. It turns out that all of this is not actually FF Probe's output. I mean, it looks like output, but it's not. Okay, we can demonstrate that by redirecting standard error away. We run that, we get no output whatsoever. So FF Probe's default behavior is to output nothing at all and output some debug information on standard error. Now, that kind of makes a little bit of sense, I guess, because this is all the exact same stuff that you would see if I was running an ffmpeg command here, and it was about to run it through a filter graph and transform it and recode it and all that kind of thing. Um, this is like a bit of a preamble that you always get. So, okay, it's a convention up across the ff projects that they do this. Fine, okay. So, what is FF probes actual output. Well, we need to say, uh, well, we, <laughs> we need to tell it what we want to know. Okay, so we can do that by s providing the additional parameter show streams. That's FF probes output, apparently. Um, I'm not sure what kind of format this is. I've not seen it before. It looks like the uh, forbidden love child of XML and INI, but it uh, doesn't look too horrendous. just don't know what it's called. Never seen it before. Um, but we can provide output formats. And we can do that with the print format parameter, though if you use the short version of this parameter, it is actually OF for output format. No comment. Um, print format, JSON, because JSON's pretty good. And there we go. There's all manner of interesting bits of information about the, the streams contained within this file. And there are various other output formats that you can use as well, like XML, if that's more your thing. But I'm going to be using JSON because I'm going to use JQ to extract the information, and I like JQ. So here we have our command. Now, for the sake of brevity, I'm just going to stick this into a function. Um, because this command's going to get long and start wrapping. So I'm just going to say ff 
info is that command and there's my function ff info there we go so ff info oh dear my uh my laptop seems to be periodically stealing the focus and sending it down to the wrong screen so uh, i'm not sure what's going on there but anyway let's take our ff info which is all this json and pass it through jq now, first thing JQ does by default, if you don't provide any parameters to it, is take the input and print it. But it runs it through a pretty printer first, so it, it formats it, it indents it, it colors it, all that kind of stuff. Um, it hasn't done a great deal in this case because FF Probe's original JSON output is uh, pretty printed anyway, um, in that it's indented. But there are many programs and many applications and many web services that would just send you back the JSON on one line. Um, and that's not at all fit for human consumption. So we run it through JQ to pretty print it. This gives us an opportunity to have a look at what's there. So we can see that this is just did it again. Uh, we can see that we get an object with a property called streams and that is the only property this object has and that property is an array of objects and each object presumably is a stream which it is in this case because a container has one video stream and one audio stream so what did we want we wanted the resolution right um that's here width height. Not sure what coded width and coded height means, but uh, somebody who's more knowledgeable about video can I'm sure tell me. Um, but here we go. This is the, the resolution information that I'm looking for. So let's just start working our way down here. So first thing we do is say this is our input dot. Okay, And we get exactly the same thing back. We can say dot streams. And you'll notice that it's all shifted in a little bit and our root element is now the array so we've taken off the outer object we can now say we want the first element and remember that arrays are index zero and there we go there's the first element which is the video stream trouble is um that is very very much relying on the video stream coming first right so Let's you, let's go. Let's be a little bit clever about it. Let's just do it again, um, and use a select filter. So we, instead of providing the index here, just run that, and you see that we get each object one at a time. Um, yeah, that was it. So the first one is just there on the root, at the root level, and then you've got another object at the root level the entirety of this output is no longer valid JSON because it's not in an ob it's not in an array and there's no comma between the two objects or anything like that but the each object is itself is still valid so did I stop doing that so JQ streams and we can pipe that through to select please note that this is a pipe within JQ because it's within these single quotes. It's not a bash pipe, though they have a similar idea. We take this and we pipe it through select. What select is going to do is say, I'm only going to let through the things that match the criteria that I'm about to, to give it. So the criteria shall be, uh, what's it called? Codec type. Codec type is uh, video. Stop doing that. And there it is. Now we've just got the one object. But again, I feel like somewhere out there, there are going to be videos with more than one stream in them. Um, I don't know, maybe my next phone will have 3D in it or have two cameras and I, who knows, okay? Um, so, 
let's just be a little bit defensive about that and say that if there is more than one stream or more than one video stream then we're just going to take the first one at this point because I think that that's very unlikely uh, certainly for the purposes of this demonstration so what we can do is say that we want to make an array out of what we've got and what comes back so let's wrap all of this in square brackets and run that and now it's indented back out again and you can see that we've got an array here. Now at this point if there was more than one stream that array would have more than one element in it. So we then say gives the first element and it comes back out again. Seems a little bit needless but it's well, this is the way I'm going to do it. Maybe there is a better way to do it. Uh, JQ is very expressive. So, and I'm, I've barely scratched the surface of it. I'm well aware of that. So, at this point, we know that we've got one video stream object. What do we want? Well, we want the resolution, right? So, let's pipe it into something. Now, we could create an object and say that width is the dot width and height is the dot height. Now maybe I'll space this a little bit out. So This is the, we, we open curly braces because we want to create an object and we provide a key, or a key name and a colon because that's we separate the key and the value with colons. And we then give it a path to what we want. Uh, to, well, we give the, the path to the element in the source. And at this point, the source is just the single stream objects. So we can just say dot width and then comma to, because we want to provide another element and h is dot height. And if we run that, we get a little object out with just the width and the height. Now... I'm not going to then parse that with said because it can, you, you do not regex things like JSON. What we can do, however, is provide something that's a little bit more shell compatible. So instead of saying that we want to create an object, we can say that we want to create a string. And that string is just going to say, hello. <laughs> Wasn't that all very pointless? What we really want to do is to do some string interpolation. Now what that means is that you've got a string and inside that string you have references to variables. And we do that with backslash parentheses. Again, it's kind of shell-like, isn't it? So um, it, like your command substitutions. So but we say backslash parentheses and we can say dot width. And we now have a string with the width in it. And we can say space slash dot height. And now we've got a single string with the width, a space, and the height. But it's still outputting it pretty printed and colored, isn't it? So we've it's surrounded in quotation marks to indicate that it, it's a string type rather than a, a numeric type, because if you have a look here, the original source of the data was a numeric type. Um, what we need to do is to say to JQ, please don't bother um, pretty printing it for us. And I may have been able to put this at the end, but I'm going to put it here. So we say dash R to say raw, please. And there you go. Let's output the raw string 1920 space 1080. What we can now do is read those into bash variables using the read command. So we say read width and height <laughs> height and we want to redirect into it the output of this command. So we'll do that by saying that we're going to use a standard out or I don't know just a stream redirection so the file reference that follows is going to be read and directed into the standard in of read and the file is actually going to be a pipe which will be connected to the standard out of this command. Hit 
that in there. And if we run that, nothing happened. But we can now echo width and echo height. Pretty cool, eh? Um, yeah, JQ is a wonderfully expressive language. I love it. And combine it with <laughs> a, the also wonderfully expressive language of Bash, and you get something really quite powerful. So um, there you go. That is how I'm going to read the resolution of a video stream from the stream itself, not from metadata, because I could just put some nonsense incorrect metadata into a container and, you know, it would not match the reality. In this case, we're actually inspecting the stream itself and saying, what is the resolution? Um, the idea behind this is that we can then say, if width is greater than height, then echo landscape, else echo portrait, and it's landscape, it's landscape. Um, you know what? Let's find a portrait one. Let's find a portrait one. Uh, what do we have? Okay, this is because I rotated this one, this is likely portrait. So, um, let's just find my definition of that function. Please stop stealing the focus. Uh, it was way back. Way, way back. There it is. Let's just change that file out for this one. Redefine the function. And now read the resolution in again and rerun the if portrait. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if there's if you have any questions, please. I'm happy to answer or happy to do some more screencasts um, about various shell scripting concerns. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video and think that I should shove it somewhere uncomfortable, use the thumbs up. Uh, otherwise, leave a comment. Please do. Um, yeah, I'll stop waffling and um, bye. Stretching. I'll be stretching. What are you doing? What are you doing? Ow! What are you doing? Why? Let me get you. Let me get you. Okay, no, she got me. What if I got your ear? <laughs> no, don't get my ear. Good ear. Yeah, I bought you for you.